Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk to you about Amazon and the fact that you don't actually own your digital content. Well, nice of them to let people know that now. Yeah, right. So this is another reason to buy physical. I know we talk about that a lot, uh, buying physical to make sure you have a hard copy of it. And um, look, I'm guilty of this too. I've been buying a lot of stuff digitally because I don't want to store Mostly physical stuff. Mostly it was for room because it yeah. takes up a lot of room. It does. So people are like, oh, this is easy now. We'll just buy all of our videos. We'll buy all of our video games and our music. We'll buy it digitally. We don't have to store it. And now it turns out in the fine print that according to Amazon, you don't actually own your Prime video content. But they keep raising the prices on Prime. Yes, they do. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, you know what this could mean maybe going forward for people. Are they going to reconsider going all digital? I know a lot of people, a lot of our followers actually are like, don't do digital because they could pull the rug out from underneath you right. at any time. So, I mean, this is, we know this with Disney Plus that if you leave the service, you don't get to keep your Milan film. Yeah. Um, then Amazon, then we're selling Milan. And people thought, okay, if I buy it there, I get to keep it. Now they're clarifying that in their terms of service that no, you do not get to keep it. It's a limited license that we can take down at any time. Yeah. And this is, you know, kind of worrisome for us because I know we buy a lot of movies on Vudu and then Vudu got sold from Walmart to. Um, I think it was Fandango bought it, but you know, it makes you wonder if you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on movies and then the company goes belly up, what do you do? Right. But what if, what if you bought it from one place and had one terms of service and switched it to other company and the other terms of service? I mean, that, that seems a little shady to me because you already, you bought it under the guise of you get to keep it. Right. So, um, yeah, just be aware guys, this is coming from the Hollywood reporter. They dropped it. Uh, let's see yesterday. Amazon argues users don't actually own purchased Prime video content. The streamer says its terms of use are clear. What viewers are paying for is just a limited license. And they say when Amazon Prime video users buy content on the platform, what they're really paying for is a limited license for on-demand viewing over an indefinite period of time. And they're warned of that in the company's terms of use. That's the company's argument for why a lawsuit over hypothetical future deletions of content should be dismissed. Okay, uh, so they end up in a lawsuit over this. Yeah, that's how this came out. So in April, Amanda Caldell sued Amazon for unfair competition and false advertising. She claims the company secretly reserves the right to end consumers' access to content purchased through the Prime Video Service. She filed her ca uh, class action on behalf of herself and any California resident who purchased video content uh, from 2016 to present. On Monday, Amazon filed a motion to dismiss her complaint arguing that she lacks standing to sue because she hasn't been injured and noting that she's purchased 13 titles on Prime since filing her complaint. Yeah, but she hasn't been injured yet, but they're admitting that it's in their thing that they can pull it at any time. Right. So they're basically telling her to avoid this lawsuit, as I understand it. They're uh, telling her that, uh, oh, well, you didn't actually buy anything. You're right. just paying for a limited time access to... Your video content. Well, and usually with a lawsuit, you have to, you only can sue for what you're out, usually. I mean, as yeah. far as I understand, I'm not a lawyer, so don't quote me on that. Um, and they're like, well, she hasn't had any damages yet. But they, there could be damages because people bought the stuff um, thinking that they were allowed to keep it like you could with other uh, services. And now, uh, now Disney has the Milan thing and all that. Now it's come out that that turns out to not be the case. And that's why she's suing because they didn't cut. I guess they're giving competitive prices. So you go to, to them instead of the competition. But the competition, you might get to keep it. Yeah. Or uh, physical, you might get to keep it. But you get to right. keep it. But well, know. at least with physical, you, you pay as much usually for a physical copy with a code as you do for just the digital anymore. So you're better off buying the physical copy with the code. And if you just want to watch a digital version, that's fine. But at least you have a hard copy backup. Mm -hmm. Plus these companies, you know, especially Disney, they keep changing the movies. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could buy a version of, let's just say Dumbo. You buy a version of, of the original version of Dumbo and it's fine today. Okay, you think you bought it. Five years from now, Disney decides that Dumbo's too offensive. They take the crows out completely. And guess what? You still paid for that movie. You can still access it, but now it's an altered version it's of a, the movie. Yeah, that's true. And the thing is, it sounds to me like when she's saying about, you know, 
the pricing. I think she's comparing it to people, instead of buying physical, they might have bought the digital because it might have cost them a few dollars less, not realizing that that's a license, not a actual copy you get to keep. Yeah, so here's the most relevant most relevant agreement here coming from the, uh, the Prime Video Terms of Use as presented to consumers every time they buy digital content. These terms of use expressly state the purchasers obtain only a limited license to view video content and that purchased content may become unavailable due to provider license restriction or other other reasons. Other reasons. Well, uh, yeah, it's in the fine print, but let's be honest here. Most people aren't going to read that when you're trying to buy a movie, and they, they, and they know it, and they probably hate it at the very bottom. Well, here, they, they address that. An individual does not need to read an agreement in order to be bound by it. A merchant term of service agreement is an online consumer transaction. It's valid and enforceable, even if the consumer didn't read it. Well, it's pro that's probably true. That is true. So, um, you know, this is making the rounds. And so everybody's shocked. I don't know why oh, I'm you're not shocked. shocked. This, this stuff doesn't surprise me one iota. And um, I think that you're going to find that this applies to probably a lot of other services, sure too. I'm sure Voodoo and all them, too, probably have it if you go look. Yeah, because if they go out of business, they're not obligated to, like, mail you a DVD of your movies you bought. It's like they go out of business and that's it. You so lose why everything. give them the money? Because if you can if you can pay for it outright and get to keep it, why give them money for a movie that they can just turn around tomorrow and say, whoops, you paid us the same price, but we we're taking it because we you, you can't have your money back. That is a damn good question. Um, you know, and this is something I think people are going to have to ask themselves going forward is, you know, do we want to go back to buying physical? Again, it's a pain in the ass to have this stuff, to store this stuff. But that's the only way you can really guarantee you have it. I mean, I think personally the best of both worlds is to, you know, again, get the the physical with the code. So that way you have the, the ease of accessibility. Mm -hmm. Or if your house burns down and you lose all your Blu-rays or whatever, you still can watch your movie. But, you know, if they pull a fast one, decide to, to take that movie off for whatever reason, you still have it. You don't yeah. lose it. You're not out the, you know, $30 or whatever you paid. Um so then I'm kind of wondering how this applies to to comics, too, and all these other things are going digital. Now, I remember Scott Kurtz, uh, you know, before he went nuts, years ago, <laughs> years ago, talking about comicsology that you're renting comics and people were paying, again, $3.99 for a new comic that's on comicsology, which is now owned by Amazon. And if they decide to shut that down, you know, what do you do? Now, they do have a DRM-free uh, backups like PDF. So you can technically download all of your, your PDFs or whatever, but you really can't do that with these movies. Like you, you can't just download, a, a, as far as I know, on most of these services, like a high res version, 4k version of the movie to keep on your hard drive. Uh, you're just, you're renting them. At that point, why would you want to waste the space when you can just get a physical copy? And you might, you might waste physical space, but you'll have your digital space freed up. Yeah. Um, so here we go. This is, you know, I put this out last night and we got Matt, Matt Deckard, who, you know, is a pretty regular viewer of Clownfish said, I still miss the music videos I purchased from Apple a few years back, paid a year later, they stopped hosting them, mm -hmm. you know, uh, always bought by print and, um, you know, people were showing us their collections their anime collections. And, um, a lot of people were saying, well, we'll just go to high. I see. Yeah, this well, you know, too, <laughs> right? If, if you know, everybody else is getting rid of their DVDs and things like that, and the Blu-rays and all that, because they're all in digital. The good news is, if you go to garage sales, you can grab them for like two bucks. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, sometimes like a dollar. Oh, we were by. I remember back when uh, I think Genion was going out of business at Big Lots. They had anime mm -hmm. DVDs for two or three dollars, mm -hmm. and we we're buying like we still have, and we thinned out our collection, but we have drawers full of anime. Yes, we do. Uh, drawers full of Christmas specials, you know. And I think there's, you know, a good case to be made for going back to this. I know people are like, well, why buy it? Like with Mario, they had the 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 Mario collection for Switch. And people are like, well, why buy it if it's limited, whatever, and just get the digital. And it's like, well, because it's not going to be there long term. Well, you know what? I got to tell you, I have told Squid King numerous times to buy the physical copies instead of the digital copies. If no other reason, then, if you decide you don't want the game anymore, you can at least resell the physical copy. You cannot resell the digital. So you're paying full price and you're, you're stuck with it no matter what. If you decide you don't want it anymore, you don't like it, you're stuck with it. And he always poo-poos me. <laughs> so Yeah. Um... So it's, I, I think there's a, a better case now to be made. Now that's been made explicitly clear. Now, here's the thing. It's making the rounds now, it's news now, but this has been in their terms of service for years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just nobody was paying attention. Everybody's like, okay, whatever, whatever. Click, 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 bought it, boom, we're done. But yeah, you could have thousands of dollars invested 
in a media collection that could disappear tomorrow. Yeah, or like you said, they could make changes to it and you're stuck with whatever the new version is, not the version that you like. Yeah, I mean, what would happen if Disney, just hypothetically speaking, you had the option of buying the original trilogy on Disney Plus, and then they decided a couple months later, oh, you know what, all those files, we're gonna replace them with the special edition. So when you go to access that movie, you're not actually watching the version of the movie you paid for, you're watching, you're being forced to watch the special edition. Side note, if Disney were smart, they would put the originals out. They yeah. would sell like hotcakes. They would sell the shit out of that, but they won't, but they should, but they won't. Yeah, so um, very, uh, very interesting. This is coming out now, and I think a lot of people really need to, to reevaluate, you know, how they spend their money on media, for sure. Or, you know, either that or people are just going to go pirate more, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, yeah, just be very careful if you're paying, especially if you're paying the same price for digital as you would for physical. You might be better off just buying Or the even if it's a couple dollars cheaper for the, the, the digital, you still probably better go physical. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to wrap this one up? Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.